Welcome back. It's the OU Softball Show recapping a very interesting weekend at Love's Field. The Sooners dropped two of three to Oklahoma State in Bedlam. Still secure the number two seed at the Big 12 tournament, though. Did Oklahoma show up Friday, Saturday? Is that the team that'll go through the postseason, or is it that group on Sunday? Did the sixth inning turn this thing around? We'll find out together. We'll break that all down here next on the OU Softball Show. Welcome back in, everybody. Thanks for following along. Welcome back if you've been with us the whole season. What's up? If you're just locking in for the postseason, doing this whole chin dig for the first time, Ryan Chapman here. This is the OU Softball Show recapping everything that goes on on the field, off the field, all that fun stuff. It was an exciting weekend in Norman. Three unpredictable games. Oklahoma State, the Cowgirls win their first Big 12 series against the Sooners since 1997, just an incredible stat in itself. With a Friday performance, a Saturday performance, Oklahoma gets it back Sunday, avoids what would have been the first sweep in a three-game series in program history. They've had one four-game sweep a long time ago. Also lost some supers, two out of three, but not lost all three games. Oklahoma avoided that on Sunday. How did we get here? Well, the first two games of this series... The dynamics of Bedlam and what we've seen and how it's played out the last couple of years seem totally flipped. Oklahoma State looked like they played free and easy without pressure. It was the Cowgirls who were blasting bomb after bomb after bomb on Friday and Saturday. Seven home runs for Oklahoma State compared to the none for Oklahoma. You look at what you got out of that. A steady start from Kelly Maxwell. A steady start from Nicole May on Friday and Saturday. Where Oklahoma ran into trouble, though, was the relief pitching. Kirsten Deal was not the same pitcher on Friday as she's been starting games out of, in the circle. You look at it, Kelly Maxwell, not the same pitcher on Saturday in relief that she has been. And the Cowgirls took advantage of that. And it felt like on Friday and Saturday, every single time, Oklahoma scored. Oklahoma State came back and not only erased that, took the lead. It felt like it was immediate. First batter, second batter, back-to-back -back solo home runs, all of that. It was the Cowgirls who were in full control, playing free and easy. And you saw the demons of what's been plaguing Oklahoma the last month, month and a half. First inning, game one, Oklahoma loads the bases. What do they get? One singular run off of a walk. Same situation, not first inning. Later in the game, Saturday, Oklahoma loads the bases. One run off of a walk. It was kind of odd, and it looked like a team that almost looked they would rather almost draw a walk and not have to swing the bat and put the ball in play. As you saw, a group that was pressing, that was pressing. We talked to Patty Gasso after that game. She had no answers for the struggles with runners in scoring position. She just simply said, uh, the paraphrasing here, she believes in the talent. It's one of those, it's like a dam. And once that breaks, the flood gates will open, it'll flood out. And you got a little glimpse of that on Sunday, setting up. Very similar game to the first two. You get Casty Pickering finally hits Oklahoma's first home run of the weekend, a two-run blast, and then immediately Kirsten Deal comes in after Carly Keeney got the start, the only pitcher who didn't allow a run on Friday and Saturday. She came in. She works through a little bit of traffic, but she's trusting the defense. Defense is making great plays behind her. Kirsten Deal comes in the sixth. Single, single, single. Time. Got to bring Carly Keeney back into the fray. Kirsten Deal back to the dugout. Keeney allows a single. Those two runs were Kirsten Deal's runs because those were inherited runners. Then she trusts the defense. Oklahoma gets out of it. It's 2-2, two to two and you're sitting here going, here you go again. Oklahoma got a little bit of momentum. Oklahoma State immediately got it all back. And finally, the floodgates open for Oklahoma. It was a sixth run, sixth inning. You had it started off with Jada Coleman, an RBI single. Then Ella Parker mashes a three-run shot. So, yes, on senior day, it was a two-run bomb by freshman Cassidy Pickering, a three-run bomb by Ella Parker. And then, finally, T.R.A. Jennings can exhale. She hits the home run. She had to wait for a review. She was two for her previous 26 plate attempts leading up to that home run. Oklahoma fans will hope that changes T.R.A. Jennings' fortunes the rest of the way. She gets a little bit out of that slump. Then you get some small ball from Avery Hodge, Hannah Core, and suddenly Oklahoma playing free and easy, puts a big number up on the scoreboard, beats Oklahoma State. 
avoids that series sweep. So, so the question is simply put going to be, is it the Oklahoma of Friday and Saturday that the Sooners get through the Big 12 tournament? That's the same Oklahoma that played Saturday, Sunday in Austin. Or is it the OU team that played Friday in Austin and played Sunday against Oklahoma State? We will have to see. One of the things, though, that uh, Patty Gasso found was Carly Keeney, like we mentioned, only relief pitcher to not give up a run on Friday or Saturday. That's been a huge issue. You look at the splits for Kelly Maxwell as a starter, Kelly Maxwell out of the pin. It's two different planets. Kirsten deals even more uh, going in the opposite direction. Kirsten deal a sub one ERA starting games, eight plus ERA when she comes out of the pin. But Carly Keeney was able to not just come out in relief on Friday and relief on Saturday, start that contest on Sunday, essentially pitch the whole game outside of three batters. And for Carly, it's been a long road to get here, right? At Liberty, she was primarily an innings monster. Most of the time she was playing, she was starting. I asked her about that ability to mentally have the same mindset, whether you're starting, come out of relief. She said she's always been a pretty even keel doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. But the biggest thing for Carly Keeney has been recovering from that pinky surgery she had, an injury she sustained on the very first day, the first practice of fall camp. Carly Keeney told us it's the first time that she has really felt 100% was this past weekend. And the follow-up question that was asked by the great Ryan Aber, is it physical, is it mental? What's been the biggest struggle for Carly Keeney? This is what she had to say on Tuesday. Um, I think it was a good mix of both. I think at the beginning it was definitely physical, um, but I think it was also giving myself grace and mentally being like, okay, yeah, realistically, I did really only have surgery six months ago. So um, kind of giving myself grace to work back into it. And, um, you know, it's a struggle because I'm, I'm used to not struggling like that. And so I think, um, I really tried to focus on being a good teammate and cheering on my other pitchers and not caring about how I was doing and just getting in the bullpen and working as hard as I could and trusting in the process that it's going to come back to me because I'm working hard and it's and because, you know, I every day I'm getting it's healing more and more. And so um, it was really just I had to lean into my faith and trust the Lord in the process and put my head down and grind. And uh, fortunately, it's starting to come together. Getting that from Carly Keeney was huge for Patty Gasso and the rest of that Oklahoma pitching staff. It's something that typically Oklahoma gets rolling in the right direction about this time of year. If you go all the way back 2021, it was the Bedlam Series, Big 12 Tournament, Regional Supers that Nicole May started to round into form as a true freshman. Then it was G. Juarez that came alive at the Women's College World Series, peaking at the right time. 2022, it was Hope Troutwine that peaked at the right time. Last year, it was Jordy Ball who pitched her best softball in the Women's College World Series. Ask Patty Gasso, what, what is it about Jen Rocha that, that gets those pitchers to fire on all cylinders right at the exact time? Just what Oklahoma is going to need this weekend of the Big 12 tournament and beyond as the NCAA tournament begins a weekend after that. She is definitely the voice of calm and reason, which is what every pitching coach, every pitcher needs, I think, from a pitching coach, someone that can talk them down. Uh, we just had a good conversation today, and she is really excited. As, as much as you could look at the outcomes, she's very excited with some of the things that she saw. There were signs of really good pitches and really good innings. And uh, we believe, and she believes, that we're moving and trending up at the right time. But she has um, a real good sense of, of how to speak to pitchers, because she was a pitcher and um, they respect her and they believe her they listen to her so um, and i believe her too so i'm really excited after talking to her today about the direction that the staff's going part of what helped oklahoma on sunday was not having the weight of the world on their shoulders L having lost the series in bedlam they were able to kind of take that step back and there was a huge key that carly keeney and ella parker both talked about is why the sooners played free and easy on sunday it was senior day playing for each other, something that Oklahoma will try to replicate, that energy at least, as they roll into the Big 12 tournament. I feel like a lot of it had to do with reminding ourselves it's not about our outcomes or pressing, but how good we are. And it was a celebration of the seniors. I think that played a big part into it and uh, focusing on what we've been able to do and what 
um, the process is and how we've got to where we are. And I think reminding ourselves of that helped with the, out the outcome took care of itself. So it was just kind of a celebration of all of the seniors here. Said it perfectly. Just having some, I guess, just playing for the seniors, really making it fun for us, really got us moving and moving forward, yeah. Wednesday will decide who Oklahoma plays on Thursday. Kansas and Houston get it going. Game one Wednesday night. Winner of that will play Oklahoma on Thursday. Game two, second game out of the gate at the Big 12 tournament. It will be Oklahoma versus either Kansas or Houston. Should the Sooners win that, should everything go chalk, it's a really unique setup for Oklahoma on Friday. You would have to imagine you get the Bedlam rematch in the two versus three, Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. The winner of that likely will play Texas on Saturday in the Big 12 championship if everything goes chalk. That's a rare occasion for Oklahoma coming into this Big 12 tournament. They 11 straight years, they were the Big 12 regular season champion. They are not that this year. That goes to Texas, that snapped that streak. But I did ask Patty Gasso. Typically, she talks about it's tough for Oklahoma to play the underdog role especially the last couple of years when they've been the number one team, everyone's trying to get them. Might be a little bit different this weekend as Oklahoma lost the, the series to Oklahoma State, lost the series to Texas. Are the Sooners underdogs this weekend? Patty Gasso talked about that mental chip, that chip on your shoulder that Oklahoma might have in Oklahoma City. You know, it's, it's um, I think it's allowing us to kind of exhale, to be honest. Right? Just, you, you're supposed to win every game every day, every day you play, every team, doesn't matter. Sweep the series, I mean, that's the expectation. I think it's our expectation, but it's it can become smothering at times. And so um, I like to see, I, I'm really anxious to see the response at the Big 12 tournament and what they look like, how hungry they are. Um, and just if they're freed up, they were, they were handcuffed all weekend. And no disrespect, we got flat out beat, but we definitely were not close to being our best, and that's where we need to be. So um, this Big 12 tournament's gonna tell a story for our future as well. Like I said, game one, 1.30 on Thursday. Still waiting to find out, Kansas or Houston. We shall see, but that'll be out at the newly named Devon Park. It's not Hall of Fame Stadium anymore. Technically, Devon Park is the new name that was uh, announced on, what was that, Monday? Yeah, the days run together. We shall see. I will be out there. I'll have our guys, Randall Sweet and Bryce McKinnis out there. So as always, si.com slash college slash Oklahoma. A ton of content coming all weekend long. Game recaps from every single game Oklahoma plays in the Big 12 softball tournament. Follow-up stories from everything that is said from Patty Gasso and the players through every press conference at the Big 12 Softball Tournament. All the press conference videos from the Big 12 Softball Tournament. Everything Oklahoma all the way through selection show, where Oklahoma is headed. It will be Norman, who they will play in Norman for regional play, super regional matchups, all that stuff. Always at si.com slash college slash Oklahoma. For our entire crew, for who, John Hoover, for Randall, for Bryce, for Ross Lewis, I'm Brian Chapman. Thanks for staying locked in with us. We'll talk to you next week on a official NCAA tournament preview version of the OU Softball Show. We'll see you.